Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday morning. It is time for Ask the Gap Chef. That would be me, Monica Corrado, simplybeingwell.com. Please visit me on my website. I'm happy to be here with you every Tuesday as best I can. That means sometimes life gets in the way. Um, talking about all sorts of things having to do with gaps. So one more time with feeling. I am not a medical doctor. I cannot claim to heal anything or know how to heal anything. Um, I will be speaking uh, from my knowledge about the GAPS nutritional protocol. Uh, that means gut and psychology syndrome. I know that's backwards for you, I'm sorry. And gut and physiology syndrome. If you're new to the group, welcome, welcome, welcome. I don't always get a chance to say welcome to everyone that comes uh, to our page, but I hope you feel welcome and uh, I encourage you to search the page with the search function to see what has been covered already. I also encourage you, uh, if you have not read the yellow book or the blue book, right? If you have not read this book or this book, I don't know. Read them. You can't do a diet unless you know what it's made of. So I do encourage you to read the yellow book or the blue book or both books. I also encourage you to jump on my YouTube channel, Monica Corrado, and look specifically, if you're new to GAPS and even if you're not new, uh, look specifically at the uh, video I did I think it was in May and it's called something like GAPS Basics or the Four Pillars of GAPS, which is something I developed in my training courses when I teach practitioners and coaches. So take a look at that video. It explains GAPS, how it works, why it works. In fact, I had a very interesting question I found on another group today. Um, I don't often go on other groups, but sometimes I see questions that I may be able to help with. The question was um, about potatoes and beans and nuts and seeds and really the relative digestibility of these things and why they were not, some of them were on gaps and some of them are not on gaps, etc. And so I just pointed the person back to um, the specific carbohydrate diet which is the foundation of the GAPS diet. So if you haven't read that yet, I really encourage you to take a look at the science behind GAPS, if you will. Um, it's not random what Dr. Natasha uh, includes and does not include um, in the GAPS diet. It's very specific for specific reasons. Um, a lot of it has to do with the size of the molecule that we're talking about. So I just wanted to bring that up. If you haven't looked at the specific carbohydrate diet, otherwise known as the SCD, I would take a look at it. The book is called Breaking the Vicious Cycle. And one more time with feeling, I really encourage you to read the book and not just jump on a Facebook group um, to learn more about it. It's really important that you read the book yourself. Um, yeah, so. Again, to all of you dear ones out there, there is a coupon for this book. That's my book. If you want to learn how to cook for gaps, this is the book to use. Um, it is the official training book for all certified gaps practitioners and certified gaps coaches. Meat stock, culturing dairy, raw milk, pasteurized milk, lacto-fermentation, vegetable medley, sauerkraut, cabbage tonic, um, nuts and seeds, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so hello, hello. I want to say hello, and then I want to I want to teach talk a little bit about a subject, which I'm sure is on all of your minds. Sourcing. So let's say hello first. Oh, Tara was the first one on. Hello, Tara. Hello, Cora. Hello, Nancy. Hello, Kathleen. Hello, Mara. Hello, Jody. Hello, Lena. Whoops, go out of here. Hello, Lena. Hello, Liri. Hello, Hamda. Hello, Niska. Niska says the book for SCD is a good one. Yes. Now, 
Do not get confused. I'm not suggesting that people jump and do the SCD diet. And I'm also not suggesting that everything on the SCD has been transported to the GAPS diet. I just want to give you a little bit of the scientific background if you're interested. Um, also, there are foods on SCD we wouldn't have on GAPS. And I like to call GAPS, pardon the pun, I like to call GAPS the SCD on steroids. I know, I'm kidding. A little punchy today. Um, it's obviously not on steroids, and we don't want steroids, and we don't take steroids, but um, Dr. Natasha took that diet, and then she um, added all the things that make GAPS really work, like meat stock and ferments. Yeah, those are specifically things that are missing from the SCD. Okay, moving on. Yay, Tara! Tara made... Her vegetable medley yesterday. Yes! We've been talking on this uh, forum here on, on this Facebook Live, and we've been talking on my um, weekly uh, GAPS chat about the importance of the vegetable medley. Yes! Last week we talked about kefir, 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 however you say it, milk kefir, and... Um, and the fact that kefir whey is used for the vegetable medley, that's what makes it so unique, so specific, so different than things like beet kvass and cabbage uh, tonic and sauerkraut, etc. Go Tara. Okay. Good evening here. Yes, good evening, Kathleen. Good evening. Hello, hello, hello. All right. I think I got everybody. Hello. Hello to everyone that uh, is not saying hello but is watching. Hello to everyone that will be watching uh, whenever you watch this, tonight, tomorrow, next week, next year, whatever. Um, hoping that these serve you well. All right. So let's talk about this question of sourcing. Let's talk about this question of gaps on a diet, on a Gaps on a diet, that's funny. <laughs> Sorry, gaps on a budget, right? So, um, hmm, it's such an interesting question, isn't it? Uh, food and the cost of food. And so the first things I'm going to start with are obvious things, I hope, to you. If they're not and they're new, fantastic. I'm happy to bring them up. Um so the best way to get clean, pure food is to grow it yourself. I know, some of us can't. Some people are in cities. Some people just don't have the lifestyle. That's fine. But best way to have clean food is to grow it yourself, number one. The next thing is to find someone that you trust to grow it for you. Maybe a local farmer. Maybe a neighborhood garden right? Um, any of those types of things. Um, grow it yourself, have a friend grow it for you, have a neighborhood, get, uh, get connected with your neighborhood and have people grow different things and then share them amongst yourselves. Um, another way to uh, get clean food is to join a CSA, which is Community Supported Agriculture. Agriculture, right? CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. That's where you give money to the farmer ahead of time, and then you share in the bounty of the farm, whether there's bounty or not. So if the farmer has a bad uh, season, you have a bad season. But if the farmer has a bumper season, bumper crop, you get the bounty. You share in that bounty. So CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. What's another way to get uh, clean food? Of course, I said local farmers. One of the best ways um, to find out local resources, and I've said it before on this group, and I'll say it again, is the Weston A. Price Foundation, W-E-S-T-O-N-A-Price.org, Weston A. Price.org. They have, a, they have a, a tab called Local Chapters. So if you look under local chapters, they have international chapters. They have chapters in the U.S. Those people that are listed as chapter leaders are um, volunteers who their only requirement is to keep, a, is to keep an up-to-date 
local food resource list. So local food resources for people that live in their area and surrounding area. So please do check that out if you're looking for clean food. Um, Dr. Natasha says often you are not going to find food in the grocery store. Ah! Yes, she does. She says it over and over again. Less, she says l that less and less of what's in the grocery shore, store is food that you should be eating. Not even is food, period. Forget this should be eating. So anyway, sad but true. So let's try to find our own local resources. Again, grow it yourself, even if you can do it in containers, right? You get a bumper crop, you put it up for the winter. You can can and then ferment. You can ferment. All the information on that is in my book. <clears throat> you can can for long periods of time and then bring it back to life by fermenting so that you have the foods that you need. Um, okay, so what if the local resources are, you just don't have a lot of them? Then we can go online. Frankly, I know, then you have to pay shipping. Perhaps you could uh, join together with people in your neighborhood, with people on your block, with people in your family, and order things online if you need to, from clean, reputable places all over. All right, so that's the first idea. Okay, the next thing is to start buying things like, for example, um, this food, clean food is expensive. We know it, and it's gotten more expensive over the last two or three years. We know about all of that. So clean food is expensive, yes. What can you do? Buy in bulk whenever you can. Buy in bulk. Can you buy half a cow? Can you buy half a pig? Can you buy uh, a lamb? Can you connect with your local butchers, your local farmers who have their um, animals butchered close by and buy in bulk? That requires usually having a deep freezer. But it's a really good idea if you can do it you will save, save, save money on uh, meat, especially, if you can buy it in bulk. Yes. What about a farmer's market? Yes, Cora, great. Farmer's markets can be great for the quality of food. Sometimes they're expensive, at least in my, um, pardon me, I didn't button, um, in my uh, experience here in Colorado. Um but farmer's markets are a great way to meet farmers, to find out if they harvest, if they're doing a harvest, a chicken harvest, how, when they're doing it, how many chickens can you buy and freeze, can you get the parts, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. Yes, Lena is talking about Miller, Miller's Biodiversity Farm in Pennsylvania. Yes, yes it's called Miller's Bio Farm, I think, dot com. Um, Yes, they ship all over the country and the U.S. Shipping can be expensive, but I'm trying to encourage you to join together, create a little buying club if you want, and then um, once a month make a big order and the shipping will be less if you divide it by a couple of people or 10 people or however many people you, you work with. It's also so much more sustainable. It's so much more efficient if you're going to order online and have it shipped Try to combine orders with other people. Yes. All right. So the other thing is I wanted to get into is this. <clears throat> In terms of priorities, where to spend your GAPS grocery dollars, okay? In terms of priorities, in terms of nutritional priorities, nutrients, the most important thing is raw milk, if you can get it right? Near you. Raw milk, very important to spend your dollars on raw milk and put the, if you can, if you have access, some people don't, uh, so that you can make your homemade, right? Your homemade uh, yogurt, your homemade kefir, your homemade uh, cultured cream, etc. gap sour cream. Raw milk. Number two, very important, fats. Fats must be clean, please. We know that animals, including humans, 
store toxins in their fats, right? In their fat, pardon me. So if you're going to, mm, starting in another place, we know that GAPS uses healthy animal fats. And so it's really important for you to make sure that those fats are clean. So spend your dollar on healthy fats. Best way to get healthy fats for you and your family is to render them yourself. What does that mean? That means you talk to the butcher and you get a piece of beef fat, big piece of beef fat that you can melt down. Very easy to do. It's on my blog, simplybeingwell.com. Um, that means you get a piece of pork fat and you render it, which means you melt it down, right? The cost for these is a fraction of what you could, you will spend on jars at Whole Foods or other natural food markets, okay? Make it yourself. Dr. Natasha says, <laughs> I love it. Just roast a goose, a goose or a duck and get the fat. You'll have enough for a season. It's wonderful. So roast, roast a goose or a duck or both and get the fat from them. So it's really, um, I know that it takes time, folks, and that's the cost, right? The cost is can you spend the time to find that piece of fat from a pig, from a lamb or sheep, from a, uh, from a cow, and then um, put it in your oven and just melt it down? Really important, very easy to do, very inexpensive. I have to say, some days I just really roll my eyes back in my head when I look at the prices of things like beef tallow and lamb tallow and chicken fat and duck fat that's in the store. They're like, I don't know, $14 a jar, $16 a jar, $18 a jar. Yeah, you can absolutely make your own fat. A render, pardon me, render your own fat, healthy fat. If you can get a piece of the fat from the butcher or from wherever you order, etc., and you just melt it down. Or you can take a goose or a duck and you can cook them and pour off the fat. It's so worth it, people. You will save so much money. All right. So number one, raw milk. Number two, spend your dollars on raw milk. Spend your dollars on fats healthy fats that you render yourself, if you can. If you can't, you don't have the time, you don't have the inclination, and you have the money, buy them. They are available in jars. Okay, make sure they are organic and pasture raised. All right, what else? Number three, eggs, absolutely very important. Either raise your own chickens, yes, that would be grand. Can you raise your own chickens where you are? If you're in an HOA, you probably cannot in the U.S., um, but eggs, chickens, I love to think of the recycling that happens with chickens, right? So you take all those fabulous vegetable scraps of your beautiful produce that you're cooking with, you give them to the chickens, the chickens produce eggs, you get the eggs. It's a very closed, beautiful circle, wonderful thing. Can you raise your own chickens? Easy to do. If not, does your neighbor raise chickens? And do they feed them good things? If not, can you find a farmer that raises chickens that does not use soy or corn in the feed? Because chickens need supplemental feed. We just don't want uh, corn or soy in the feed, especially not organic because it's genetically modified. If it's not organic feed, it will be genetically modified. So what, So find eggs from chickens who are out eating bugs. Very, very important. Eggs are like, whether they're duck eggs, they're chicken eggs, they're turkey eggs, whatever eggs you're eating, they are the perfect food. They are complete food. When they, those animals, those birds are raised correctly, it's just, really going to be nutritionally uh, superior for you in your diet. So spend your money on good eggs. Please, please spend your money on good eggs. Either raise the chickens yourself, find a friend who does, find a farmer who, do, who does, ask the questions. Hey, farmer, what's in the feed that you feed your chickens? Mm -mm. First question. Hey, farmer, 
Are your chickens out on pasture? That means are they eating bugs? Are they moved every day to new pasture to eat bugs? Number two question. Hey, farmer, what are you feeding them in their supplemental feed? Oh, you know, whatever. No, that's not good. Okay, so we're feeding them corn and soy. Is it organic, corn and soy? No. Then you're having genetically modified feed going into your eggs. So just some ways to determine that. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, that's number three. Number four. What did, what did, am I right? One. Hold on. I have a big list here. One, two, three. One, two. Oh, what else should you spend your money on? Um, uh, well, making ferments yourself, which is... So buying ferments, folks, yes. Is it easier? Yeah. Uh, is it less expensive? No, it's more expensive. Um, so it's easier and it saves you time, but it, it costs a lot more money, probably four times as much money for you to buy a ferment than you, for, for you to make a ferment. So save your money by making your own ferments. Okay, make your own ferments. That means... Spend your money on uh, clean vegetables. Here's where things people get confused. So I love to suggest that you look at the Environmental Working Group, ewg.org, Environmental Working Group. They do something every year, you probably all know it already, called the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. The Dirty Dozen is about these are the 12 vegetables or fruits that you really have to buy organic because they are full, they're laden, they're crazy full of pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, chemicals. Okay, that's called the dirty dozen. And then the clean 15 are 15 different fruits or vegetables or and vegetables that are clean most of the time. That means even if you buy them conventional, we know avocados do not need to be organic. Really? Ah, save a buck or two every time you buy avocados. Adds up. So I really encourage you to check out the Environmental Working Group, ewg.org. They have something called the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. They update it every year. You can download it. You can print it out. You can take it to the not grocery store. Take it to the farmer's market. All right, what else? Um, let's see, what else? So you need to spend your money on raw milk so you can make your yogurt and kefir. Spend your money on beautiful healthy fats, and I just told you how to render those. Spend your money on really good eggs, number three. Eggs, 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 very, imp muy importante, very important. Uh, spend your money on clean vegetables so you can make them into ferments and lots of them yeah and then we look at um meat and poultry meat and poultry yep i'm not saying that you should go out and buy uh conventional meat or or chicken believe me i'm not, not saying that uh, i am saying find the best quality meat or poultry you can find and uh use it to make meat stock remembering that meat stock made with low meat, meat, uh, pardon me, made with specific meaty bones that give you not so much meat um, is a really wonderful way to make sure you're getting enough protein. So look for those cuts for meat stock that are what I call low meat cuts. Yeah, they are meaty neck bones. Wonderful. Eat the, eat the meat, drink the stock. They are uh, chicken backs and wings. Um, yeah, perfect. And necks, make the stock, eat the meat. Not expensive, gels, and not a lot, not too, not expensive, yeah. Gels and makes really good meat stock, etc. So those are the things I wanted to just talk with you about. We're really important to spend your money on raw milk, good fats, good eggs, and I've defined what a good egg is, yeah, those top three, and then look at produce so you can make your own ferments, really important, inexpensive, easy, fast, delicious, save you money, 
Yeah, for sure. All right. And then, of course, organ meats. Can you get them? Are you eating them? Really power packed. I have to say that if people just drank kefir, believe this is the word according to Monica, not Dr. Natasha. She may agree, but I didn't ask her. So what, what would I spend? What would I be focusing on? If people just ate homemade kefir every day, good eggs, good fat, kraut or some other ferment that you love, meat stock and organ meats, you'd be on your way. Everything else is gravy. All right. Hope that was helpful. All right, I'm going to see what people have to say here. Hello, Josephine. Hello, Kathleen. Cap Tony Stevens. Hello, Carol. All right. Hi, Ideal. Hello, Mary Ann. Good to have you. Hope I see you next month in Knoxville. I hope I see all of you in Knoxville next month at the Weston A. Price uh, Foundation um, International Conference. Mateha, hello, hello, hello. All right, let's see what's going on with questions. All right, so Tara says again, you need to be caref careful with farmer's markets too. There are a lot of people who buy bulk crap online <gasps> and jack up the prices and sell on the farmer's market. I'm so sorry to hear that. Ooh, we hope they're not. Cora says, my son and I are lactose intolerant. Perfect. There is no lactose on GAPS. Does everybody know that? Somebody give me a thumbs up if you know that there is no lactose on GAPS. No lactose. Why is there no lactose on GAPS? Because everything we make ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all those thumbs up. Yay. People know there's no lactose on GAPS. Right? When we make our own Yogurt, homemade yogurt, homemade kefir, homemade gap sour cream, homemade kefir cream, all those wonderful things. There's no lactose in them. So that's why you can do the laps the that's why you can do the gaps diet because there's no lactose. Yes, I encourage you, Cora, for you and your son to do lots of cultured dairy. Start slowly, one teaspoon, and slowly um, you know, integrate. And uh, gradually have more and more. Hey, yay, Marianne, I'll see you there. Excellente. All right, M Matea says, a goat owner told me if you do not preheat milk, there is a chance lime is transmitted through the milk. Any truth in this? Not that I've ever heard. Not that I've ever heard, but I'm not a goat owner. But still, I haven't heard that lime is transmitted through the milk. So... Up to you. Remember that um, you are welcome and often you are uh, encouraged by yogurt cultures to preheat the milk first when you're starting your first batch of yogurt. So yes, I haven't heard that lime is transmitted through milk. I don't know. Maybe Marianne has. She could let us know too. Uh, but I haven't, haven't heard that. No. All right, Shelly says, hello, Shelly. No, hello, Tara. Would you recommend dairy-free yogurt if you cannot have dairy or no yogurt at all? No. Why would you not be, okay, so so would you recommend dairy-free yogurt? Uh, I'm thinking, Tara, you're thinking like almond milk yogurt and coconut milk yogurt and all that processed, I'm going to say garbage out there in the grocery store. Yeah, no, I would not. Uh, I would not suggest those things at all. You can make your own coconut milk and then try to make that into yogurt. That's something you could do for the baby. No process to make myself. Yes. Yep. So I wouldn't try anything. Um, Tara, I would try maybe making the. Um, Make coconut milk yourself and then make that into yogurt. If you culture that if you want to. But remember, what's the gift of cultured dairy, folks? Not only is it lactic acid, which is very important for digestion and for immunity and for every other darn thing in your body, um, but also it's the probiotics, yeah? And it's the calcium. So for the baby, if you're not, for anyone, if you're not doing dairy, if you're not able to have dairy, I'm not sure the baby's still not able to have t dairy 
Taro. We should talk more about that. Um, so the gift of cultured dairy is always the gift of cultured anything. Good bacteria, beneficial bacteria, lactic acid, very good for the digestive tract um, and digest gin, good for your immuni immunity, etc. Um, but the thing about dairy, uh, you know, live and enzymes, etc. But the thing about dairy is that um, calcium. Everyone needs calcium. Every mammal on the planet needs calcium, humans included for everything from strong teeth, strong bones, very important, <coughs> pardon me, strong teeth, strong bones, um, immune system function, very important. So, yeah, remember everyone that um, there is what's called the dairy introduction structure. And so... That's something Dr. Natasha has put together and offers as how do you bring and how do you introduce dairy into someone's diet that does not have anaphylaxis. I'm not talking about anaphylaxis, but for someone who has sensitivities to dairy, I'm putting it in quotes, sensitivities to dairy. That means that sensitivities are usually sensitivities to lactose. And there's no lactose if you are um, making the yogurt long, culturing long. Um, that's usually the problem. So go ahead and work with the dairy introduction structure, folks. I really encourage it. Yep. All right. Hello, Wanderlust Heart CB. Good to have you. Hamda says, hello, Hamda. A long time ago, our culture was meat and milk and people were strong and they were able to kill lions. One man, one lion can fight along. Yep. That's true. Meat and milk, very strong. Animal foods are builders. Plant foods are cleansers. All right, who's got any question at all that you would like to ask about anything on GAPS, not just where to source, how to source, all that good stuff. Just send it in the old comment section. Yes, salud, having some water. When on stage one should you start introducing the approved dairy options? Okay, so stage one is two to five days, everyone. So start introducing approved dairy options in stage two. One more time with feeling. Stage one is two to five days only. People are not supposed to sit on stage one. You may sit on stage two for months and years, um, but not stage one. So... Hopefully, Wanderlust Heart CB, you are not sitting on stage one very long. Um, you're working on stage one with meat stock, with the vegetables in meat stock, with the meat from meat stock, with good salt, with the fat from the meat stock itself. Um, and then we introduce, you can introduce whey in stage one uh, if you have no problems with whey. And then ghee in stage two, and then on you go. One more time, folks. Please let people know all over the place that stage one is two to five days. That's it. Two to five days. Two to five days. Do not sit on stage one. Not a good idea. Okay, our fresh walnuts from the garden also need to be soaked. Chestnuts are allowed. Autumn coming here. Woohoo! Yes, fresh walnuts from the garden need to be soaked. So all... Yes, all nuts, all seeds, all beans, all grains, even though there are no grains on the um, GAPS diet, need to be soaked or sprouted or fermented in order to make them digestible. Chest any nut, any seed is allowed. Yep, yep, chestnuts are allowed. Yes, autumn is coming here too. I have some leaves falling in front of me, uh, in the window in front of me. Yes, good, good. What is the name of your YouTube? Okay. Where, what is the name? So the name of my YouTube channel is Monica Corrado. So this is the, the page here is Ask the Gap Chef Monica Corrado. So you can look about how to spell that on the page, on our group page. C-O-R-R-A-D-O, -R -R Monica. You can find all the Ask the Gap Chef. I don't know if I have all of them there yet, but many of them that I've done are there. 
so that anyone can see them. And then you can get these books. These are Dr. Natasha's books. You get them right on her website. Please do visit gaps.me. Gaps, G-A-P-S dot me, M-E. You can find them there. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them on my website, simplybeingwell.com, etc. Yep. Hello, Anka. Anka Maria. Hello, Jody. I was told by a neighbor... Slice zucchini thin, rinse, dry, salt, then put into the dehydrator. It will produce vegetable chips. Or oven at 200, does that ruin the nutrients? No, it's a great idea, but you really want to put in a dehydrator. Um, you, will, you will preserve all the enzymes, so that's great. If your oven, your oven will not preserve enzymes. Uh, you would want to put your oven down as low as you can. Usually ovens are, are 170 these days, um, sometimes 150. So put it down as low as you can go. Yep. And that would be wonderful to do. Do it with everything. Do it with beets. Do it with carrots. Do it with zucchini. Do it with whatever you can get your hands on. Use the dehydrator, make vegetable chips. It's a wonderful thing to do. Yes. Cora, it's gaps.me. Not .org and not .com. It's .me. It's just gaps .me. M E instead of O R G or C O M. Yes, it's a wonderful idea to make dehydrated chips. All right. Any other questions for today? We can talk about meat stock. We can talk about bones. We can talk about kefir. We can talk about uh, cultured cream, gap sour cream, whatever you like. Yes, good. No, it's gaps.me. G-A-P-S dot me. Then you've got it, Cora. Gaps.me. Dr. Natasha's website. Go there and check out the FAQs if you haven't. Check out the FAQs. Facts. Because there's so many incredible... That's right. There's so many incredible um, answers, incredible questions from people. And incredible answers from Dr. Natasha on all sorts of subjects. Just sitting there waiting for you to read. If you have a question, check it out. Pretty cool. I actually know people who have printed out all of her answers and then they put them in a binder and then they index them and then they look them up. Pretty cool, right? Lots of specific answers that are not covered in any of the books. So that's a good place to be. All right. Any other questions? It is now... Oh, what is your favorite meat to start with on stage one meat stock? Um, so, uh, hmm. I believe that the easiest thing to start with for people is chicken. And I believe that because it's relatively inexpensive, easy to get, and mild in flavor. So a lot of people like to start with chicken. I personally am a lamb Meat stock lover it is my favorite. And now that I'm talking about it, I've got to make some today. Lamb meat stock. I love it. Um, beef meat stock. Lamb, beef. I love all of them. Chicken is very mild. It's very soothing. People love chicken meat stock. So it's a nice thing to start with. I would start with also, I would not start with, I mean, you could start with just one meat stock, but I really encourage people to mix it up. You know, do lamb, do... Turkey meat stock is great. It puts you right to sleep. Really nice um, because of the tryptophan. So turkey meat stock, chicken meat stock, lamb meat stock, beef meat stock, pork meat stock. Make it all so good for you and so different and so delicious. All right, Shelly. Hi, Shelly. What about diarrhea on and off? I'm seeing improvement, but then comes back. Intro feels overwhelming. So, Shelly, take a deep breath. Ready? Everyone take a deep breath. Yes, intro can definitely be overwhelming. Um, if it feels overwhelming, you may want to start on full gaps. How could you do that? Um, I like to suggest that everybody take, just, you know, take out the foods that are not GAPS compliant first, like throw out all the, throw out, donate, whatever, get rid of, um, 
We don't want to waste food, but is it food anyway? I'm not really sure. All right, so any processed food that you have, take it out of your diet. I also suggest if you're starting on full to take out nuts and seeds in the beginning, take out beans in the beginning, take out fruit for a while, and just eat protein, meaning meat, uh, all those meats, poultry, eggs, some meat stock, and start very gradually with you know, start with a ferment, start with cultured dairy, you know, just slowly, slowly. You don't have to be, we don't want you to be overwhelmed, my dear. Um, in terms of diarrhea on intro, uh, the things I wrote on the page today are what I'm going to say now for everyone, which is whey, W-H-E-Y, which is the liquid simple protein found in cultured dairy. It's just found in dairy, period. Whey that you drip from yogurt or whey that you drip from kefir um, will be very good to help firm up the stool. I would drink it all day long. Way, 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 way. Yogurt, if you can tolerate it, too. Yogurt, yogurt, yogurt. Those things are going to help Remember, another thing I think you saw this morning on the page, what causes die-off? Meat stock can cause die-off. So if you're on intro, egg yolks can cause die-off. Certainly all of your ferments can cause die-off. All of the cultured dairy can cause die-off. Everything can cause die-off. So, slow and steady. Slow and steady. Shelly, you may want to drop all vegetables for now and just work with a little bit of stock and whey and yogurt for a couple of two, three days and see if we can get you back online. That's my suggestion. All will be well. All will be well. All will be well. Everyone, I keep telling people, find what works for you. Where can you stand? What feels not overwhelming? Pick one thing. What feels not overwhelming? Pick one thing, whatever it is. Maybe it's, I'm just going to start with doing meat stock. I'm going to drink meat stock every day. Cool. Maybe it's, I'm going to start making my own fats. I'm going to start rendering my own fats, melting my own fats. I'm going to start every week. I'm going to do a different one. And within four weeks, I'll have four big buckets full. I love the word bucket. All right. Four big, lots and lots of good healthy fats, right? Choose one thing. Maybe right now, I mean, golly, it's almost October, so all of our gardens should be bountiful right now. So maybe you could, this weekend, maybe just put up a bunch of ferments because you have so much uh, in the garden that could be fermented. Cucumbers and you can make salsa that's fermented. You can make from tomatoes. Um, you can... Ferment anything, almost anything that's in your garden. So pick one thing, Shelly, pick one thing. And right now your one thing is, let's get the diarrhea under control. Let's firm up the stools. And then when that, once that happens, let's maybe reassess what the next move is. But I would be doing lots of way, 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 drink it all day, drink way all day. Maybe I should write a song. And yogurt. Okay. Okay, Eva. Hey, Eva is here. Woohoo. Hey, Eva. All right. CB Victoria. Hello. Welcome. Brea Lynn is here. Phil San is here. Hello. 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 All right. Welcome, everyone. Let's see. Jody says, Oh, how many chicken feet and chicken quarters to make stock? So, quite frankly, you don't need any chicken feet to make meat stock, but you can use them. I usually suggest two to four feet per pot. And if you look at my meat stock video, which I did probably a year ago now, maybe six months, eight months, long time. Uh, on meat stock, I talk about using chicken feet um, because they will not break down in the short amount of time that meat stock is cooked. So how do you get that gelatin in? All right. And chicken quarters. So it's all up to you. You can use... You can use, uh, I like to think about pounds, like two to three pounds of your chicken quarters, 
to two to three quarts of water and you're off and running. Good idea. All right. Let's see, question from Carol. Hi, Carol. Someone with Crohn's. Oh, so sad. Crohn's, what is a good place to start moving into gaps? Hmm, someone with Crohn's, I would do no plant gaps with. Yikes, but you probably don't want to start there. Um, because, so someone with Crohn's, take out all nuts, take out all seeds, take out all beans. Take out all grains. Take out all processed foods. Take out all sugar. Take out all raw food, like raw vegetables, like salads. Uh, start bringing in lots of good fat, lots of organ meat. Start with some meat stock. That's what I would do. Yep. All right. The reason I say don't start them right away on no plant is because if they're if they're on the standard American diet, it will be a total brain. They'll just be totally overwhelmed and freaked out. And you know, to go from standard American to no plant is a big, huge, massive jump. And I think it's too big of a jump. So I would just start by taking things out that are injurious. And those are the things I mentioned. And uh, Start slowly bringing in lots of good fats, healthy fats, tallow, duck fat, chicken fat, all those good things, ghee, um, lard, lard, lard. I didn't talk about lard much today, but lard. Um, start bringing in some liver maybe once a week. Start and taking those other things out that are injurious. I hope that's helpful. All right, where are we? Let's see. Oh, my poor brother-in-law. I know. Yes, he's miserable. I'm sorry. Trying to give some baby steps. Yep, baby steps. Hello, Carol. She's joined us. Yes, nice to have you, Eva. Okay, uh, what else have we got? Some other question came on. All right, Crohn's we got. Tara asks, can we talk about how to talk to others about gaps? Sure. Um, what do you want to know? So... Um, one of the things like how to describe gaps. So what I like to tell people is gaps is a traditional food diet that heals and seals the gut and rebuilds your gut flora. And then if they're like, well, what does that mean? Uh, give me more specifics. You can say, well, gaps is kind of like paleo. A lot of people know paleo. Paleo plus cultured dairy and ferments. GAPS is paleo plus, what's paleo? Meat and vegetables. So a lot of people know paleo. Um, yeah, so you can say those two things. Um, if people need to know what is GAPS and why does it work, how does it work, I would shoot, send them again. I mean, I'm happy I did that little video for all of you folks a couple of months back, the one called The Basics of Gaps, or it was May of this past year, May of 21. No, May of 22, May of 22, um, called The Four Pillars of Gaps, which just talks about what is gaps and how does it work. Maybe that would be helpful. It's on YouTube. People love YouTube. They're all watching videos all day going like this. Wee, 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 right? So that's an idea. All right, quick question to everyone. By a show of thumbs, how many people have made their own fats? How many people are rendering their own fats? Is everyone rendering their own fats? Do people know how to render their own fat? Own fats? Yay, one! Render your fats, folks. Do it. It's really interesting. Very easy to do. Melting fat down. Very interesting. Very easy. Okay, good, good, good. People are doing it. Ashley, hey, Ashley, can you make lactose-free cow milk for tea and coffee? I don't know. What do you think? How do you make lactose-free cow milk for tea and coffee? You, yay, Eva. Um, hello, Charmaine. Okay, how do you make lactose, how do you make it? You culture it. So you either let it sour and then you have sour milk, raw only, please, um, or sour cream that's going into your coffee. 
And wait a minute, are you drinking coffee? Hold on, people. I just did a whole big thing on coffee. I hope everybody watched it. So jump on the coffee. Um, check out the YouTube video. I did the Facebook Live, Ask the Gap Chef on coffee and drinking coffee and where coffee. I'll just say it right here. So coffee is on full gaps. Coffee should be so weak that you can see through it. Um, yeah. And really what Dr. Natasha suggests is that you drink the coffee black and you eat a big chunk of cheese next to it if you can. Excellent. <laughs> it's so funny. Okay. If you can tolerate cheese, that you drink your coffee black, which is great. And then you eat a chunk of cheese for the calcium. All right. So the only way you can make lactose-free cow milk for tea or coffee or whatever, lactose-free cow milk, is to let it sour. Or to culture it into yogurt. But yogurt doesn't... I mean, I don't know about putting yogurt in your coffee. I do... I personally like cultured cream in my coffee. It's yummy. But the other thing that I suggest to people is the bulletproof method, which is don't... Which is instead of milk, put butter in your coffee or ghee in your coffee or... Pardon me, tea. Put butter or ghee or a combination of them in your hot tea really good for you. The fat is great for your brain and everything else and it makes it, uh, gives really good mouth feel, etc. Bacon fat might, might be the first rendered fat by most. Yes, Mara, that's true. However, bacon fat isn't really on intro. I mean, by the time you get to stage four, you can have bacon. But, um, yeah, but not before then. Okay, I got a wave. Hooray. All right, Carol wants to know, tips and tricks to help kids on gaps, aw, being different all the time with their food. Care, you mean like um, with other kids? So, sorry. Who said sorry? Oh, no, no, it's fine. Mara, it's perfect. Um... If you're on full gaps, you can have as much bacon as you want. And that is true because just putting bacon in the pan gives you fat. And then you get bacon fat as long as you cook it at a very, very low temperature. Yes. Perfect. All right. So, da, 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 da. so Carol, you're asking. Um, here's the deal. Children on gaps are going to be different. And and over time, they are going to be far healthier than any other child on the standard American diet or standard European diet or standard any diet, right? Diets that are high in processed foods, diets that are high in foods that are full of glyphosate, uh, which is everything that's not organic and even some things that are, sad to say. Um, right? So children that eat this way or they eat Weston Price, right? Right? Children that eat nutrient-dense foods are going to be far more healthy than any of those other children. So I know it's the long game here, folks. We're looking for the long game, meaning, right? It's not like right here, right now, children are not eating the same things as their, right? Their, their uh, friend group, whatever, or their family group or whatever. And it's hard, Um the benefit will show up in the long run. That's the first thing. I know that doesn't help the short term. However, one of the things that we do on GAPS is uh, there are a lot of moms who try to do substitutes, especially on full. When you get to full GAPS diet, you can do subs for many, many things. And I actually put together a really great chart on substitutes. Um, but exa example... Right? If you're moving from standard American diet into full gaps, what could you make differently? You could make pancakes from nut and seed flour instead of regular pancakes. You could make muffins from nut and seed flour instead of regular muffins. Same thing with cupcakes. Same things with bread. So sometimes what we need to do is take out the processed foods, throw them over there, and then add in foods that are uh, substitutes that are GAPS compliant, that look the same. So they want pizza, so you make a GAPS pizza. Um, you know, again, cupcakes and 
even though cupcakes are not things that people should be eating every day, but muffins and pancakes and waffles and um, cookies and crackers and all those things um, can be substituted on the GAPS diet. And that's what I encourage moms to do, right? Ice cream, make it from kefir, make it from kefir cream, make it from yogurt, make your own. Um, ice pops, get some molds and make some out of uh, GAPS milkshake without the eggs, uh, right? Those kinds of things. So let's see. Okay. Yes. Ashley says, have them be proud of their home cooked and loving food. Yes. I love that. With the other kids, friends. Yep. It's made special for them. Yes. I mean, can't we make homemade food like, like, oh, the thing again? Can't we make it like, wow, how could we instill this into our children? Like my mom took the time to make this for me. She didn't just go off to the drive through Can we make that a value again? I hope so. Yeah, help them to find recipes and help cook. Yes. Bria, yep. Bria Lynn says, this helps my girls. They love food and don't seem to care much anymore. Great idea. Get them involved in the kitchen. Absolutely wonderful idea. Sectio. I don't know if I said that. Hello. Welcome. Okay. All right. Uh, Monica, please review quickly to avoid glyphosate from food. Should we be looking for non-GMO or organic labels? Ooh, really good. And soaked oats, cinnamon, cinnamon bars. We don't have any oats on GAP, so I can't really talk about that. You're welcome, Carol. Okay, so quickly, everyone, glyphosate. I hope you all have heard of glyphosate. Glyphosate, Marianne put it, she typed it out for you. Glyphosate was is still in Roundup, uh, which they're finally getting sued about, Monsanto. Um, but glyphosate is sprayed on all, not all, but many of the crops, certainly all of the wheat um, in the United States. Now, Europe, not so much. Europe banned glyphosate, I don't know if it's a decade ago or five years, long time ago. So U.S. products, please, we're not eating wheat on gaps, but really important if you buy things in the store which we've already said isn't really food. Sorry, I just thought I'd throw that back in there. Uh, really look for organic. We have to look for the organic label. The organic label right now is the only thing that I'm aware of that uh, protects us against glyphosate. There's even a new label that they have that they're putting on that's called, you know, certified glyphosate free. I've seen on a couple of things. I'm not remembering what. But really important, folks, to eliminate glyphosate from your diet. So glyphosate, what does it do? It ruins all the work you're doing with GAPS. Glyphosate opens the tight junctions in your gut to allow molecules. Glyphosate causes leaky gut. There, I've said it. So please make sure that you're not eating anything that has glyphosate in it because it can ruin all of your efforts. You can say, oh my goodness, I've been working on GAPS for six months, a year, two years, nothing's happening, but you're eating a bunch of stuff with glyphosate. Obviously, the diet can't work. Okay, thank you for that, Marianne. Wanderlust Heart CB, if our intuition tells us we need more carbs, can we introduce things like organic rice or organic oats? No. If your intuition tells you that you need more carbs, then eat more carbs, meaning more squashes, um, right? More butternut squash, more acorn uh, squash, more, um, all of those are carbohydrates, folks. Remember, if it's not a fat and it's not a protein, it is a carbohydrate. So all of your vegetables are carbohydrates. We do not introduce organic rice it's a grain. We do not introduce organic oats. It's a grain. There are no grains on gaps. So if you want to add more carbs, how about beans? You can have, yes, you can have um, on gaps, lentils. Add in some lentils. Soak them, sprout them, or ferment. 
Wanderlust Lord, Wander, Wanderlust Heart, whatever your fabulous real name is. Beans, lentils, right? You want more carbs? Go there. Beans and lentils. Lentils, white navy beans, and lima beans. Um, lentils are wonderful ways to get more starch in, if you like, more carbohydrate in. That's bulkier. That's a great way to go. And again, <coughs> pardon me, soak them, sprout them, ferment them. I like to sprout lentils. Um, really easy to do. Makes them so easily digestible. So yeah, before you cook them, really good. Okay, Marianne also says, glyphosate also contributes to weak collagen formation, leading to joint problems. Yes, absolutely, you are right. Quinoa is definitely a grain. Yep, you're welcome. Yep, quinoa is a grain. Yep, so quinoa, again, folks, get the books, blue or yellow or mine. It'll tell you what, no grains, so no quinoa, no buckwheat, no amaranth, no oats, no teff, no einkorn, no korshan, no um, spelt, no corn, no, I mean, if it's a grain, no rice, no wild rice, no grains on gaps. All right, folks. Uh, yay. Okay. Yes, glyphosate and joints. Oh, I can't even believe this. Yeah. I like ion gut, folks, but that's another story for another time. I think it's the only thing we've got right now that can actually help us protect against glyphosate in all the food out there, which is laced with it. All right. Not to close on a, a scary note. I am going to wish you all well. We are at time. Um, thank you for joining me. And I'm going to see you next Tuesday. Yes. Chia seeds are a seed. Chia seeds are technically okay on GAPS, but not until full GAPS diet because they are full of, they are a mucilaginous seed. Wait till full GAPS for that. Okay, Jody. All right, all. I'm wishing you a wonderful week. I'm wishing you luck in sourcing good foods. I am going to challenge you to, if you have not rendered your own fat, if you've not rendered pork fat into lard or beef fat or lamb fat or bison fat into tallow or you haven't made a duck or a goose for that fat, I'm going to uh, invite you sweetly to do that this week. And then tell us about it on the page. Post pictures of it, ask questions about it, etc. Get yourself some good fats and mix it up, folks. Lots of fat this week. You need it. You need it for the stress you're under. Your adrenals need it. Your brain needs it. Your heart needs it. You need these fats. So render them yourself. Let's get them in your diet and your children's diet. Very easy to do. Ask any questions you need to on the page and remember to tag me. All right, folks, have a wonderful week. You're welcome. Okay, be well all. See you next time. Bye.